Welcome to part two of our mini tutorial on how to design and analyze conjoint choice experiments. In this session, I'll be walking you through the steps of how to analyze your data using JUMP after you've gathered it. Suppose we've designed our study, gathered our data, and uploaded it as a data file into JUMP. Now here's an example of a data matrix where one person was given eight different choice sets where each option took on a different brand name, price, warranty, and design. In this case, the person was asked to choose the option they preferred or if they like neither one, to choose none. Hence, this gives us 16 rows of data with each row describing both the attribute values of each option within each choice set as well as whether or not it had been chosen. Note that some choice sets we see a no for both options. That just means that neither option was chosen for in that case. One thing that's going to be important later on is that when you set up your data, you will want to make sure that JUMP treats each variable as a categorical rather than continuous value, as is shown here, where there's a small histogram icon next to the variable name. Now, JUMP is going to do this automatically if the variable names are qualitative, like yes, no, or uh, lifetime, or one-year warranty. But if they're numeric, you're going to need to change the, the column designation yourself by clicking on the top of the column. To analyze the, the data, we're going to need a mathematical model that we think will describe how people make choices based on attributes. The one that we're going to be using is pretty simple, and it works a little bit like this. As shown in the figure, we assume that people mentally combine the preferences they have for each of the attributes to form a sense of overall utility or preference for each option. They then choose the option that has the highest utility in the set, which in this case could be neither or the no choice option. The way we describe this mathematically is shown by these uh, a couple of equations. First, uh, we assume that utility is a simple linear combination of attribute values. Now in this equation here, V sub i is the perceived overall attractiveness or utility of option i in a set. X is a 1, 0 dummy coded variable that takes on the value 1 if the option has a given level of an attribute and 0 otherwise. For example, one way of coding the attribute warranty in this way is to declare that X is 1 if the warranty is 1 year and 0 if it is lifetime. B is then akin to a regression weight that captures the part worth utility of that attribute level. The choice rule is then given by this expression, which is known as the multinomial logit model. In simple terms, it says that the probability of choosing option I from the set is proportional to the relative attractiveness of that option compared to the other alternatives, where E is the, the, in the equation is the base of the natural logarithm. Okay, so how do we estimate all this? Well, in theory, what you really want is a stat package that supports estimation of the multinomial logit. Unfortunately, JUMP doesn't allow us to do that. But we can get around it by analyzing the data as if people were making a series of independent yes-no decisions for each option with each choice set. And I'll show you how to do that. So here's how. Uh, here's our data set again. The first thing we want to do is click on the Analyze tab. Um, and, and those of you who have had some familiarity with doing regression and jump will find this as being, um, being all pretty familiar. Um, and then what we want to do is after clicking on that, it's going to come up with a, a couple of options. And we want to click on Fit Model, when, which is where we specify what's the model that we're going to analyze. To do that, uh, we get a model specification window, which once again should look pretty familiar. Now the way we do it is we first want to populate the Y field with our choice variable, which is our dependent variable, and then, and then populate our model effects field with the four attributes that we're going to be using. Um, then uh, after that, um, we, you notice up in the upper right where it says personality, and you'll see the word nominal logistic. What this means is that because our dependent variable is categorical in nature, and in fact it's binary, yes or no, what JUMP automatically knows to do is to estimate the model not as a linear regression, but as a logistic regression where we're going to be using maximum likelihood to estimate the parameters. So after we um, did that, if we wanted to see our parameters, we go ahead and we click Run, of results that look something like this. 
Um, now, there's a lot on this table. Uh, if you look at the top, there's a lot of things related to model fit and so forth and so on and lack of fit. But since we don't really have a lot of time to, to go through all these details, what I thought we would do is focus in on the parameter estimates at the lower part of the table, which is the, really the key thing that we want. Now, these parameter estimates are going to be uh, the values that we're going to be used to, to specify the, the parameter B in our, in our utility equation. Um, now, the, the thing about this is that one thing you have to keep in mind is that in these, uh, that because the way this particular binary logit model is written, uh, it's written in a way which is the opposite of the way we would normally write a utility equation. For example, if you look at this equation, what it says is that higher values of B and X mean lower levels of the probability of being chosen. So as a consequence, we have to interpret all the coefficients as being reverse signed. So in particular, the, the higher, the larger the values of B in our table, that generally means the less the person likes it or the less the likelihood that that alternative is going to be chosen. So let me kind of give you a more specific example of this. Um, first, looking at the table uh, right here, we have this intercept value of 5.57. Um, now, this is the utility of an option when all attribute levels are at the zero or default level. Jump automatically makes the last level it encounters be the default or reference level, which we can see by noting uh, which levels do not have parameter estimates. In this case, um, our reference option is brand sigma, price 80, elaborate design, and lifetime warranty, which you notice are the, 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 the attribute levels which are not listed on the table. Um, now, the more important that we care about and the ones that would were managerially more important are those for, for the different levels of the attributes. Now the way you interpret each of these is that they represent the relative degree of lack of preference for a given attribute level compared to the base or default level, which has a value of zero by definition. So in this table, the way we would interpret 57.28 value for brand gamma is that the respondent had a real dislike for this brand relative to the default brand um, sigma, which has a def uh, by definition a value of zero. Now in contrast, the fact that alpha has a negative value of 8.49 means that the respondent liked the name alpha more than sigma. So once again, each of the coefficients reverse sign relative to its utility. Hence, if you were to plot these, the way you would do it is to assign a value of zero to the utility of the reference level and then change the sign of all the coefficients. Okay, now, when we're all done, what we want to use is the, these coefficients for is to create our utility equation, which we're going to uh, insert into the multinomial logit model, that is our Vs. Uh, now, the way we do that is quite simply, our V is just simply the linear combination of the intercept plus each of the beta coefficients multiplied by the coefficient for, um, uh, for each of the, the dummy values for each of the different attribute levels. The one thing that you have to remember is because we need to flip the signs of all the coefficients when putting it into the multinomial logit. The reason is, is if you look at the way the multinomial logit is written, higher values of V or higher values of the B and the Xs mean, uh, mean um, a higher likelihood of being chosen rather than a lower likelihood. Okay, there's one more thing that we have to take care of, and that's what to do where we how to analyze data in choice experiments where we have a no-choice alternative. Now, the way this is going to, the way, the way we do this is pretty easy, but it's going to involve a little bit more work. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is to change our data matrix and jump. So instead of having nominal values for the attributes like elaborate or plain or one-year warranty or lifetime warranty, we're going to need by ourselves to go ahead and change these to be one-zero dummy codes, where we're the ones that keep track of what the ones and zeros mean. Hence, for example, we might declare one to be elaborate and zero to be plain. Next, and this is the most important part, for each choice set, we'll be adding a new row to capture the no-choice option. So it's the no-choice option, of course, doesn't have any attribute values. By convention, we're going to be assigning a value of minus 1 for the values of this option. 
So here's an example. Note that we have the same matrix that we had before, but now everything is converted to dummy codes. And instead of having two rows for each choice set, we now have three, where the third line represents the attributes of ni the neither alternative, where all its attributes are minus one. Okay, then finally, just as we did before, we can use these derived parameters to construct our utility equation. Uh, the one thing we, for our multinomial load jet, from which we can develop pr predictions about how people respond to new, new combinations, just don't forget to switch the signs of the coefficients before you do so. Okay, that's basically it. Now, obviously, the topic is more nuanced than what I am able to cover here, so don't hesitate to contact me as questions arise.